The second Charles Lawrence walked in the door, I thought, I swear I know this guy from somewhere. But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. Lawrence is about to get a big surprise. No, Chris. Sheer panic. What are you doing here? Yo, what's good, guys? We got another classic TCAP reaction for you, but actually, I can't even say TCAP reaction because this is a clip from Hanson vs. Predator, his newer series that I somehow missed. I actually started watching this series from Chris Hanson on my channel, and in this one, Chris actually knows the creep, like, by first name. They've literally met multiple times, but you know what? I don't want to spoil too much, so make sure you just watch it to the very end because I'm serious when I tell you this one is absolutely insane. So without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because a large portion of you guys that watch my videos aren't subscribed. Let's get it. The predators I catch come in all shapes and all ages, like this creep pushing 60. He's looking for a boy. So that's right. This is Charles, a man pushing 60 who is over here creeping because he thinks that the decoy boy that he was speaking to on the phone is inviting him over while the house is empty. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's kind of refreshing to see like HD footage here because so many of these older TCAP reactions I've been doing from the original series are just like compressed to all hell and like only available in 480p. So this is a breath of fresh air. Again, I don't know how I missed this back in the day, but I'm excited to get into it. He says I live alone. Okay, I'm alone. We're working with the cooperation of Fairfield, Connecticut Police and Tetrid Corps. <laughs> so as we can tell, too, we're not actually working with the original company that Chris was working with here. It's a new organization that's helping him with the whole decoy work. But I love just the glimpse into the chat rooms here. You got this old lady trying to type as if she's a 13 year old. And then when this guy shows up, he gets to see the worst decoy in terms of just like looks alone that this show has ever seen. This is the same guy who has the meme where, you know, everybody quotes him saying, oh, it's just me, my mom me and my daddy but he literally looks like he has graduated with his master's degrees and then some like this dude is so freaking ancient looking absolutely looks like a normal adult but you know what we're just gonna go with it and i'm sure this bozo is gonna fully fall for it lawrence is well educated and apparently very well off he lives in fairfield He's an accountant. He works as a commercial real estate broker. So this dude's a successful accountant, real estate broker, and he lives in a super nice area that is actually only a half mile away from this investigative house. I love too that this entire time so far, they're trying to like stall out, showing us information of the guy, but the only footage they have is him creeping in front of this window. So I'm pretty sure so far, obviously, I'm not showing you every single clip, but they've showed this shot of him looming, looking through the window like 20 times with all this fake camcorder like HUD over the screen. Oh, this is hilarious. But when the decoy reveals his supposed age, Lawrence immediately follows up with what seems to be either concern or some unrecognized intuition. <laughs> so the decoy tells this dude his age and immediately he's like, are you a cop? Which dude, now your argument of I didn't know he was 18 is going to go right out the window because you know this bozo is going to be trying that as soon as he gets interrogated. And they'll just be able to say, dude, why did you respond with saying, are you a cop then if you weren't aware that this person was not? 18. Like he is setting himself up for failure this early. That's amazing. How you doing? Good. Should come in. Lights on. My now it's getting dark out. It's supposed to rain. It's hurricane. Oh, and this is so cringy already. Man, I miss this house, though. This reminds me of the start of this whole journey. This is beautiful. I'm kind of glad I missed this until now, honestly, now that I have some more context of how this show's ran. But yeah, first of all, we have the terribly cringy fake young voice from this decoy. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> As if he can't see his five o'clock shadow and like insane muscle mass that only a full grown 20 something year old man could produce. And then the guy immediately notes that the entire house is like really well lit, which I always say is like the number one indicator to me you have to have so much lighting for television cameras and like this dude's obviously like why is everything so bright in here it's all right though the decoy had a fire excuse that you know it's getting dark outside even though we clearly saw it was daylight outside but you know what we're gonna keep moving on because this dude's about to get exposed but before he can retrieve something from his car lawrence is about to get a big surprise no chris and if he thinks he's in for a shock so am i Oh my God. So the reveal just happens. Uh, the dude confirms that he has some stuff in his car. I'm sure they were talking about balloons there, but you could tell just by this reaction. He's like, oh, Chris, he knows him by first name. Of course, Chris Hansen has already become probably a household name here, but they're about to explain that this guy actually knows Chris on a whole nother level other than just seeing him on the television. And, and something strikes me. He looks familiar. I couldn't put my finger on it. And it dawns on me that this is a fellow I had met on the commuter train. 
So it turns out, as Chris just stated, this guy rode the same commuter train that Chris Hansen would, I don't know, wherever they lived during this time, a few years ago, back in the past, and they would constantly be on the same train together, so they're on a first name basis and have actually had like multiple conversations. So think of how insane that is. This person from his past that he slightly remembered and then he jogs his memory, he's like, oh yeah, this is the dude I used to see and probably chat with on the train sometimes, and I'm about to expose him for one of the most terrible, sickening crimes that you can imagine. That just has to be insane for Chris Hansen to go through, and I would not be surprised if this was one of the more stressful interrogations that he's ever had. Not that he obviously was very close to this dude, I mean, it took him a while to recognize him, it sounds like, but still, that has to be insane to have that prior history and know just how insanely wild it's gonna be for this dude to realize that he's getting exposed by Chris Hansen. I mean, imagine if they had conversations about the TCAP show back in the day, like if that's what he was working on during that time. I wonder if that dude would have ever imagined that he would one day be on that show. When Lawrence sees me, he bolts, gripped in sheer panic. What are you doing? I know, but you have to explain this to right. And I mean, this dude is like staring at Chris as he's leaving, but he can't even get out more than a few words. Like he is actually in just complete shock right here, which is <laughs> amazing to me. Bro is just absolutely flabbergasted. So I don't even think we're going to get a huge interview with Chris himself. I'm guessing this dude's about to go out and get arrested, but don't worry. We do have more footage here. This is not the end of this. All right, let's keep it going. They slap the cuffs on him and take him into the garage. At the station, he tries to hide his face with a hoodie, but there's no escape from our cameras. <laughs> and I love that. Once he's at the station, he's trying to hide his face with a hoodie, as if he doesn't realize they have literally like an hour worth of footage of him with his face uncovered before this. I mean, he had to get driven to this place. This is not the first time we could have spotted your face, my dude. You got to know there were some hidden cameras in there, but it's always hilarious when these guys try this as if there's any way to save their image from being plastered across the internet as the absolute creeps they are. And then thanks to channels like mine, they kind of get a resurgence of popularity. I mean, what if somebody didn't know this guy was a creep that knew him and is finally seen in this video, like, it's gotta be insane. You know, I mean, Chris Hansen is actually, I know him, he's a friend of mine. I commuted on the train for years. And that's more of an embarrassment than anything. And like I said in the intro, I'm guessing this dude's biggest issue right now is just absolutely how humiliated he is. And that adds another layer of the satisfaction of seeing this happen, because obviously we want these types of people to be utterly shamed and humiliated. That's the point of the show. But it's extra spicy when you realize that this guy had a personal, although, you know, not very close relationship with Chris Hansen, but they had conversations in the past. He knew him. And when he saw his face, that look of horror was absolutely just breathtaking to watch. Like this dude was not even thinking about how he's probably losing his job, his career, his family. All he was thinking is how embarrassing it is to be exposed by an old friend like this. He had to know he was doing something wrong. There would be no reason for you to ask this then. Are you a cop or involved in law enforcement? Yes, dude, I called it. This dumb text that he sent after the person said their actual age in the chat log, the decoy, of course, he asked them, are you a cop or involved in law enforcement? There would be absolutely no reason for this guy to even ask that question unless he knew that something he was doing right now was sketchy and he needed to check for himself. But maybe he'll have some ridiculous excuse like, oh, I just personally don't agree with cops, so I didn't want to talk to one. Even though I knew he was over 18, I just don't want to be friends with any cops, which would be kind of a crazy take. But, you know, maybe this dude will try that. I've seen some ridiculous excuses on this show. I would not be shocked. But then you clearly are right. But I do that law enforcement or a cop. I do that with everybody because I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to understand get, I don't why be in, and be in trouble with, any, with anybody. I, <laughs> so he kind of does halfway claim that he just checks with everybody that he talks to if they're a cop or not. He doesn't really explain why, but he just claims that's something he does in everyday conversation. So yeah, this dude clearly is uh, very rich and successful, but he's not that smart or witty when it comes to making up these excuses to cover his own ass. He blames it all on his eyesight. I thought, he told, you, I thought he told me he was 18. You know, I'm looking. I, I thought he said 18. I swear to God. I would never, ever in my entire life. There is no way, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this might enter the Hall of Fame for excuses right now. So this dude, if you're confused, is claiming that he saw the number 13 in the text when he asked the decoy, hey, how old are you? And his eyesight is so bad, he claims that he's got a scratch on his eye and he can't wear uh, contacts, so he has to wear glasses and maybe his prescription is off. But, you know, he saw that three and thought that it was actually two circles stacked on top of each other, which would, of course, be an eight. He thought he was reading the number 18, guys. It's a simple mistake that has cost this man his whole life if he gets persecuted for this crime. So, I mean, clearly, we just got to take his word for it. He's an old man. His eyesight is poor. He thought they said 18. I mean, if that's not the most laughable excuse you've heard in a long time for one of these morons, I don't know what is.
I can show you that I was at my ophthalmologist yesterday, an eye doctor that I have a scratch on my eye as to why I'm wearing these glasses. And he's just going on about his eyesight, bro. At this point, he's just claiming to be blind. Like, oh, I could tell, I could give you proof. You ask, put up some fingers right now. I could probably tell you. Is that four fingers? I, I can't tell. It's so blurry. Oh, see, that's this is why it's getting me in trouble. I knew I should have gotten a new prescription. He got eight years suspended after serving two years in prison, and he has to register when he's released. So this dude has to register on the registry, of course, that these guys always go on. And he got eight years, but was suspended after serving two, which I am conflicted on, as always. I guess I'm not a lawyer, so I can't say what is, you know, a good amount of time or not. But this dude clearly is a menace. And the amount of texts I skipped from this that are just him going into detail of what he wants to do and all that, you can look that up and find it yourself. But I'm sure you don't need more proof to know that this dude was a monster. And this episode was an absolute banger. We got to see an angle to Chris Hansen that I have not seen before, where he is just shocked to see somebody that he knows in real life on his show in front of him. Not the type of situation you want to be in, but I want to know what you thought of this down in the comments below. Shout out to my Patreon supporters that hold it down over there. And as always, thank you for watching to the very end of the video. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this one. Hope everybody had a great Memorial Day weekend. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.